We finally know why Boruto hasn't activated his karma yet after the time skip. Chapter 9 of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex just dropped, and it is absolutely peak content. From the first round of Boruto vs. Kawaki, where Kawaki's stock continues to plummet, to Jura facing off against the new Inoshakacho trio with a new tailed beast bomb that we've never seen before, there is plenty of exciting things to take away from this chapter, and we will go over every aspect. But nothing compares to the confirmation of Himawari possessing Kurama. Yes, you heard it right. This chapter not only confirms that Himawari is a Jinchuriki, but the tailed beast she has is actually a smaller Kurama, and we see the two of them interact within the Biju plane. Hey everyone, welcome back to AJ Anime, and here's everything you need to know about the new Boruto chapter. First, let's talk about this chapter's cover, which is the trio of Shikadai, Inojin, and Chocho. And look at the drip. I love how all the chapter covers have been showing off the clothing styles of everyone in full color spreads because the drip hasn't stopped yet. By seeing the cover, we can say that Team 10 is going to play a vital role in this chapter. Okay, so Chapter 9 starts with Team 10 facing off against Hidari and Jura, as they all just have a staring contest with each other. Shikadai is sweating bullets because he knows these two mean business, and he don't want no smoke. Shikadai tells the sensory team that the two intruders are in front of them and requests backup immediately. Jura takes out his notebook and tells Shikadai that he remembers him as he is the son of the 8th Hokage. So you mean to tell me that this man Jura just carries around a personal notebook with everyone's information in it? Like, what else does he know about Shikadai? Anyways, upon Shikadai asking, Jura says that they came to Konoha chasing the Nine Tails Chakra and were expecting to see Naruto, but instead, they sensed the chakra out of Himawari. But hearing this shocks everyone, as they don't know what he's talking about, especially the part about sensing the Nine Tails chakra from Himawari. Shikadai looks to stall until backup arrives by asking more about Himawari's relationship to the Nine Tails, as he knows that they won't be able to beat them alone. So Jura tells Shikadai that he's just as confused as he is, and with each new discovery, more questions pop up to which he says is a good thing. Remember, Jura is being born from the Ten Tails with his own drive and motive to learn more about his existence and everything around him. More importantly, we know that his instinct is driving him to find and devour Naruto, to which he believes will bring him closer to the answers he desires. So with this new discovery that links him closer to Naruto, Jura has his sights set on Himawari. Jura then launches a wood-style attack in an attempt to capture her. In response, Team 10 attacked together, freeing Himawari from the wood-style restraints. Now, this is no small feat, as we see Shikadai using the shadow-binding jutsu to break open the wood branches, the same wood branches that impaled several jonin class ninja from earlier. Seeing their teamwork, Jura praises them and tells Team 10 again that his only goal is to capture Himawari, and if they won't stop, he has no choice but to attack. Shikadai lets his father know everything Jura said, and now both of them are confused, as they don't know why the Nine Tails is involved with Himawari since Kurama died after the battle with Ishiki. We then get a page showing Kawaki still laid out from his earlier encounter with Jura. It looks as though Amato is either trying to wake Kawaki up, or he's just watching in on the action. But he then has a stunned look on his face as he sees Jura, and wonders exactly what he is. Next, we switch perspectives to Kashin Koji, who tells Boruto that Jura and Hidari are on the move, and he needs to fly to Mount Boku. But wait a sec, did you guys notice that Boruto and Kashin Koji are in what appears to be Orochimaru's hideout? Based on the layout of the cavern and the snake lanterns on the wall, it's safe to say that this is indeed one of Orochimaru's hideouts, which could mean that Orochimaru is helping Boruto and is not affected by omnipotence. Remember, Orochimaru revived himself from a white Zetsu clone, which has the chakra of the divine tree as well. Due to this fact, Orochimaru could actually be immune to the effects of omnipotence, but we don't know for sure yet. Either way, it looks like we might be seeing Orochimaru very soon. After finding out the Shinju are in Konoha, Boruto rushes to their location using Flying Raijin. We then see Shikadai continue his conversation with Jura, as Jura confirms to them that he intends to devour Himawari and defeat them in the process, causing Team 10 to go on the offensive with an Inoshikacho formation. 
A few panels later, we see Delta is happy that Kawaki is awake, but upon waking, he says that he can sense someone coming. After that, we see Boruto arrive, standing on the rooftop across from Kawaki. Shikimaru reaches out to Boruto, letting him know that two Shinju appeared in the village and they are after Himawari, and she is somehow associated with having Ninetales Chakra, which alarms Boruto. Hearing this, Boruto tells Kawaki he doesn't have time for any chit-chat, and if he wants, he can also help. But as we know, Kawaki ain't trying to hear any of that, and wants nothing more than to fight Boruto. Activating his dojutsu, Kawaki fires rods at him, but Boruto dodges them with ease. Now, the speed of these rods is way higher than you think. Naruto in Baryon mode could catch them, and Daemon even caught them with his teeth. But Boruto dodges them with ease, not even looking shocked by the surprise attack, which shows just how broken Boruto really is at this point. And he's been achieving all these crazy feats while only in base mode. Boruto continues to dodge all of Kawaki's rods while casually walking up to him. And finally, Kawaki comes close to attacking Boruto, but Boruto uses his incredible speed to dash at Kawaki and punch him in the stomach. Boruto then mocks Kawaki, telling him how pathetic he is and how he hasn't been doing any type of training. This man Kawaki continues to get disrespected chapter after chapter, and I don't think his stocks can fall any further, but Boruto might have just completely shattered everything he had left after that statement. Boruto looks as though he's preparing to leave, but Kawaki activates his karma, which in turn triggers Boruto's own. The Toad tells Boruto to hurry and leave the scene as soon as possible. This panel finally confirms that Boruto can't control his karma even now, and if the karma activates, then Boruto will lose control and Momoshiki will take over. So this could be a bigger threat to Konoha than Jura. Now a question for you guys. Do you think, with the power of Momoshiki, Boruto will be able to defeat Jura? Or will Kawaki absorb Jura to become stronger? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video so far, do me a favor and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now, coming back to the chapter, as Boruto flies away, we see Kawaki thinking about the L he just took. Wait, I mean Boruto flying away in response to his karma activating, to which Kawaki gives off a look as though he figured something out. Is this a sign that Kawaki will use his karma to his advantage in future fights? Maybe we will find out in the upcoming chapters. In the next panel, we see Team 10 fighting with Jura as Inujin flew up in the sky with Himawari. They are trying their best, but Jura's hands are still in his pocket. Talk about disrespect. Shikadai then uses his shadow-binding jutsu on Jura to restrain him and also wants him not to get distracted, to which Jura casually responds by charging up a tailed beast bomb with his eyes. Yes, his eyes. Just how strong is Jura? As Jura was preparing for the tailed beast bomb, Chocho saved Shikadai by punching Jura away, and the tailed beast bomb flew away and landed somewhere else, causing a huge explosion, with the sight of Sarada running to help Team 10. Inujin uses his jutsu to protect Himawari and escape the hands of Jura with his teammates. Jura and Hidari discuss what they should do next, as Jura is curious why they resist in handing over Himawari, knowing they wouldn't hurt them in the process if they complied. Jura contemplates what is driving them to protect Himawari, as that information would be crucial for them moving forward. Himawari then tells everyone to leave her, as they cannot escape Jura and are also risking their own lives. While Himawari was talking, she entered her own mind, seeing visions while being carried from the scene on Ino's bird. Inside her mind, we see none other than a small version of Kurama. It seems she's in the Biju realm, and that the nine-tailed fox is still alive somehow. The baby Kurama then mentions how it never expected to be detected by the Ten Tails, as it sounds almost upset to have been discovered by him. Turning around and looking shocked, Kurama asks Himawari if she knows who he is, to which Himawari replies, Kurama, right? And with this, the chapter ends. Now, let's talk about some of the important things we witnessed in this chapter. We saw Kashin Koji appear again, and he seems to operate behind the scenes as Boruto's surveillance system. It hasn't been explained yet, but there are many theories around why Kashin Koji is helping Boruto and how the relationship even came about in the first place. Does Boruto know the true identity of Kashin Koji, or is that still a secret? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. It feels kind of nostalgic looking at Boruto and Kashin Koji together, as it reminds me of Naruto with Jiraiya, and I love how this element was added into the story. Hopefully, we get a flashback to explain everything, but we'll see.
The other thing is Boruto not being able to control his karma. If he doesn't control his karma soon, there is a chance that Kawaki will use this to his advantage, and we will also be seeing Momoshiki very soon. This could link back to the very first chapter of Boruto, when we saw the two brothers face off in a destroyed Konoha village. Maybe Kawaki purposefully made Momoshiki take over Boruto's body to defeat him, and they destroyed the village in the process. Some Kawaki fans will say that Boruto ran from him when he used his karma, and Kawaki is just up one point on Boruto. But, I mean, really. Kawaki is still on fraud watch until proven otherwise. And finally, the shocker. Kurama is alive, or at least a smaller version of him anyway. At first, I thought the nine-tailed beast was some new beast and not Kurama, but when he talked to Himawari about the ten tails and asked if she knew who he was, I am definitely sure it's none other than Kurama. Now, I know a lot of you guys might be confused on how this is possible, but remember, tailed beasts only die temporarily before being revived. We saw it happen with the three tails after Rin died, and it was later found and captured by the Akatsuki. And, if you also recall from when Obito invaded Konoha to steal the Nine Tails, Kushina wanted to kill herself along with the Nine Tails to delay the Akatsuki's plan to capture it. So Kurama returning after three years is nothing out of the ordinary. Now, we don't know if it's the same Kurama, but just younger and potentially weaker, or if it's a brand new Nine-Tailed Fox entirely. What do you guys think? Let us know below. And with that, that's it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of this chapter. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos. See you next time.